this time I've been in Morocco for almost three months, traveling from the coast to the Atlas Mountain, from the Rift Valley all the way to the Sahara. And there are two things I noticed right away, wherever I went. I noticed that vast majorities of women are veiled or wore some kind of hijab on their heads, which was not the case before. Morocco was just like Paris back in the day, rarely seen a woman with hijab except the elderly or women from small towns. These are some of my old pictures in Morocco in the 80s when life was simple and easy, but I guess these are almost impossible today on any Moroccan beach. I was told that the change came after 9-11 when Arabs and Muslims were under pressure and under watchful eyes of the West. Arabs and Muslims felt that they couldn't breathe anymore. As a human being, we tend to exhibit the very thing we think people don't like about us as also known as stick it to the man. Therefore, the hijab wearing for youngsters was born. It was to assert their presence in the Western society. And quickly it became a fashion created, promoted and popularized by Turkey with TV network series, social media and also family visiting their relatives in the blood or ballad from Europe or with some combination with all of the above made it easy transition to North Africa and subsequently to their sub-Saharan neighbors. Therefore, hijab is worn today with pride. Second is the presence of sub-Saharan migrants in the Maghrebs. There is no train station I traveled through, no parks I came across, and many street corners I passed by that I had not seen migrants camping around. The one couldn't cross the sea to Europe now are camping everywhere from Tunisia all the way to Morocco. It became an eyesore and created a problem and animosity between locals and the migrants, which led sometimes to violent confrontation or blatant racism towards sub-Saharan Africans in some of the major cities. As a result, we all know what happened in Tunisia lately, spearheaded by the government itself. I started telling Moroccans that I live here in Morocco, specifically in Rabat, to avoid paying tourist price. And it worked in most cases. Although the Arabic is a bit different, but they get it. I am sharing a taxi with two other Sudanese migrants, and they don't want to be on the camera. Jamal Sudan, I see now. Okay. 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 Okay.
Today is a new vlog. Uh, it's, that's a new vlog. I'm in Tangier now. I got here yet last night. This is my first day of vlogging. Yet, by the way, this is not my first time in Tangier. Uh, back in the day, I came through here years ago when I was doing backpacking around Europe. I was a teenager at that time. I don't know how many years ago, but it was a way back in the day. So, and you know, we came. That was way before the Africans start, you know, uh, coming through this port, going to uh, go to. I mean, going to. To Spain or to Europe, so there was only like a few African around. So I'm talking about African, what I mean, Sub-Saharan African. So anyway, I was coming the other way, the other direction from Europe to here. I was in Spain for month and month, going all over uh, Spain. But uh, I got the ferry from Spain to Al I got the ferry from Algeciras to Tangier. So when we were in the boat, actually, was in the ferry was about five uh, Sub-Saharan African. Uh, two from Congo, one from Cameroon, one from Mali, and me. And when we, when the port, I mean, the ferry reached the port, the custom took our passport saying, okay, you know what, we might be dealing drugs or something. Because back then, there was no terrorism. Any black person is seen is considered to be a drug dealer. Anyway, they round up, uh, they took all our bags to the custom and took our passport to the boss. So they said, uh, when they took our passport and they said, okay, they're gonna do some cavity check because uh, there was they caught few drug dealers a week before back in the, that was the that was the the norm so anyway they took our passport to the post office uh, in Tanji at the port so literally the post the boss himself look at the passport he said oh he he put on my passport he said is this guy in there they said yeah, yeah it's one of them he took the passport he said to get follow me they'll follow him and three officers so they were coming toward us in the holding i saw the boss coming with the three officers you know uh, toward us and with the media saw me he said hey even batuta i said what he said what are you doing here you know he told his, his friend this guy they don't do drugs because i know this guy he is the one of the most traveler i ever met and that was the boss of the custom. And he happened to be literally, when he said Ibn Batuta, he clicked. He is the one who gave me the, the name, the nickname of Ibn Batuta when I was a teenager. And he was the roommate of my brother at the University of Muhammad Hamis. Oh my God, that was one of the funniest things. He jumped over me, he said to me, okay, you, come, you, come in, you come in from Spain? I said, okay, how long you stay in Tangier? I said, I'm here only for one or two days. Oh my God, he said, you're not gonna leave. So he, he told his, his friend, this is not a drug dealer, this is a traveler. He is, is Ibn, but modern day of Ibn Bapututa. Everybody cracking up. Those Congolese guys in, in Mali, they could not believe I know somebody in the port already. I said, I didn't even know he works here. He gave all the other guys passport and said, you guys can leave, you know. So he took, he, he took my passport and said, put in his car, got my luggage in his car and drove home. I stayed with him for three days, literally three days. That, was, it is, that is one of my funniest story. Got my passport to the boss. The boss happened to be my friend. It was my brother's friend, and uh, he and my brother shared the same apartment at university. And he, the one, gave me the nickname of Ibn Batuta in T Tanji. So he told me, "You're not gonna leave Tanji without staying with me." So he took my bag to his car and drove me to his uh, his house. And he was married and had a kid uh, by then, and I ended up staying with him for three days in Tanji here. But that's a whole different Tanji back then and now. That back then Tanji was much much smaller, and but now it's huge, huge, huge. I couldn't even find my way around it. Huge. There's a new Tanji and old Tanji, and it's almost uh, another Casablanca right here. Anyway, I'm gonna be vlogging around. Hopefully, I'm gonna capture some beautiful pictures here, and uh, hopefully, you guys gonna like my video. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Tangent's vlog is coming to your way. Look at here, I'm in this square here. 
in front of a cinema reef. I don't know what the place is called. This is my first day here, you know. So hopefully I will, you know, check the name on this one. Right. Okay then, this, uh, that was my story about Tanger. Until then, don't go anywhere. This place reminds me of Paris, honestly. It looks like a 18th district of Paris. Pigalle, Barbès, you know, all how, you know, that's all the na Moroccan neighborhood too, so <laughs> maybe that's why they chose those places to live in. Side. there's a lot of African camping over there on the street and the little kids women salam alaikum okay yeah hello okay what I was saying is on my right hand side over there there's a lot of uh, African uh, women camping there with the kids little babies honestly bunch of them in every corner begging money so I don't know I talked to them you know they are from all uh, sub-saharan West Africa the Guinea Mali Ivy Coast Senegal what have you yeah, they're all like a, it's like a team they have little kids running around age of one two three four and uh, it is frustrating for me bonjour ça va hey it is frustrating for me to see these kind of things, but what can you do? You know, that's what life is. So I'm just heading down there, down the hill. And uh, the problem is going down the hill, you have to come back up. <laughs> Sometimes you ain't easy. All right. The one I say hi to was an African lady, you know. She had like a shock face in her face, so I had to say hi to her, and she relaxed her face a little bit, you know. Well, yeah, that's how it is. Sometimes we avoid one another here because of the stereotype. If they don't see me, if they don't see me with a gear like this, literally, they will run away from me. Because I'm backpacking around, it's not all my pants are not that clean. They think I just got here, like they say in Liberia, JJ just came, or JJ came, or Johnny just came, you know. They run away from me. But uh, sometimes when they see me with all these camera gears, they say, oh, this uh, African might be a tourist. So then when I talk to them, sometimes they will. Uh, they have a, a friendly face you know I don't know so this is the modern town of Tanger <clears throat> all right look at this an old church really I don't know what kind of church is this but it's a very old church here You know, but uh, I had to leave because it's surrounded by a lot of government building. So, see all this building here. That's why I gotta leave. It's, it's the police everywhere. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here as fast as I can. I would love to spend some time here, but oh, there's a the gendarme main office right on my right hand side, and there's a lot of gated police standing back there. I don't know. Ministry of the Interior and there's a, a Security National right behind me over there You know, I don't know. I'm gonna go Yeah, I, I gotta get out of here. There's too many Government official you see all those flag with the you see the police van pulling up. Yep. 
Yeah, no, no, no. I, I got to get out of here. Anyway, let's go. All right, I just met a Senegalese guy over there. You know, I, I couldn't film him. We're talking actually. It was so funny. And also, this is something else. Among the African community around Morocco, Tunisia, it's only Senegalese. Can when you see them, you can talk to them. Literally, they never run away from anybody. You know, they will smile, you will hear about them, you come to them, we start talking. But any other, I've already would completely ignore you, and Cameroonis. Cameroonis will beg you if, if, if they need money, you know. Even I've already, they will do that. If they need money, they will talk to you. Otherwise, they completely ignore you, Daki. But not Senegalese. That is something about Senegalese is incredible. Assalamu alaikum. So, yeah, that is very impressive. You know, because and uh, because they first of all the Senegalese thing, everybody is from Senegal. Particularly when they see me, I said them negative right away. They think I'm from Senegal. So and that is the bond in between them because they speak their own language everywhere. So they never run away from anybody. But uh, Aboren and Cameroonians and other guys, woo, it's like a pulling the teeth when you want to talk to them. First of all, they will ignore you. You have to stop them and force conversation with them. It, it's crazy. Anyway, this is a beautiful park here. That's a beautiful thing about Morocco too. Anywhere you go, you see some park. Really, really, really beautiful park. Everywhere. Doesn't matter where you go. Oh my god, this is crazy, you know, the guy, he literally bought this thing for me because I asked the name, Carmos Safar in Logatil Arabia. Okay, Chukran, very much, thank you, you know, this is, when you come to Tanger, it's all over Morocco, I think this is the season, they eat in it everywhere. Ara Halili, Chukran Jazeera. It's a lot of tea, a lot of tea, right? You have to be careful if you eat in this, if you have a dental problem, <laughs> if you have a cavity, you're gonna have a problem with that, you know. You don't like so much, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're just walking on the on the on the beach, the Corniche, and they call it in the Gulf State, they hear they call it Shati, but in the Gulf State they call it the Corniche. We are walking around just to see the beautiful sunset. Alright guys, thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye. This is Michael here in the house from Liverpool, England. <laughs> He's a traveler, avid traveler, going no, you know, he just traveling with no plan at all. You know, you gotta do that sometimes. Hola. Hola, como estas? <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
Yeah, these are all narrow streets. It's beautiful narrow streets over here. Assalamu alaikum. When did the Tariq Lakas go? Here, okay. Where is it? Here. Bab Martha. Bab Martha. Bab Martha. But here, there is no entrance to the market. Here, okay. Which one is better? I don't know. From here, yeah. Allah is very good. Thank you, Jazeera. All right, I think I'm on my way now. They told me there's a Kasbah around here. So I don't know how far it is, but... And I am on my way to the Kasbah because they told me the Kasbah have a beautiful view. So hopefully... Assalamu alaikum. Good view from, from the shop, right? <laughs> Up here. Up here, nice. Uh, yeah? guys I'm on the rooftop look at this Spain right behind me you see here this is Atarifa now Atarifa is here uh, Al Khasiras is right there and Gibraltar is over there that is crazy so you see Spain you can see Spain right over there this is a Moroccan last town uh, toward uh, Spain Tangier here Right here, really, really happy. 